and I think the life of the Rebbe therefore may also be understood as a kind of autobiographical voice set within a biographical frame. This creates an utter conflation of self and other, one that is perhaps less Defoe's Caruso than Stein's Aleph Kitoko. So it is in this sense, with the, with the yogin's life as a vehicle for the madman's own self-reflection, and the madman's identification with the yogin serving to authorize the life, that the underlying mechanism of this biographical act might be understood. And it was through this act uh, that a biographical corpus, 400 years in the making, was effectively brought to life. And so what I want to do now is try and unpack a little bit the mechanisms through which this kind of vivification, as I've been mentioning, took place. So the madman is credited with the traditional Buddhist motivation for crafting his version of that is, spreading the Buddhist doctrine and thereby benefiting innumerable beings. But the madman's own biography describes yet another rationale uh, where he is credited with the following reflection, and this is again quoting from his own uh, biography, where, he, where the madman is said to think, at present in the snowy land there exist numerous biographies and collected songs of Milarepa, yet uh, the transmission of his extraordinary biography has been interrupted. Now, uh, the notion of an extraordinary biography, qualitatively distinct from earlier versions, is a central uh, 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 concern here, and I'll come back to this. So what might constitute such a work uh, to distinguish it from other forms of life writing, and in particular, from other versions of the yogi's life story? Well, one contemporary Tibetan critic has described the formulation of the extraordinary biography the yogin's close disciples composed biographical bits and pieces uh, based upon uh, what they themselves saw and heard. But after 400 years, the extraordinary biography had become interrupted or lost. So those parts that were not lost were corrupted with various kinds of misinformation so that they became untrustworthy and ineffective. And for this reason, uh, this critic argues as follows, and this is putting from the time of the text. Songyun, the madman, edited together into a single work all of the biographical fragments he saw or heard in order to restore what had degenerated and further de uh, develop what had not degenerated. He made pure the impure elements, and he made true the untrue elements. So this view, I think, aptly describes how the final version, the extraordinary version, came to be viewed. That is, a story that is pure and precise in its representation, reclaiming a so-called true account of the yogin's life from a landscape of exaggerated and misreported claims. It is a work that appeared to capture Milarepa's life in its living flesh. And the assumption here might be that the madman had somehow access to rare materials, either oral or written traditions, that somehow illuminated the past more clearly. However, uh, through a, a detailed analysis of the literary corpus, we find a very different picture. And in fact, the madman based nearly his entire narrative on previously extant sources, in many cases drawing upon them verbatim. So descriptions of the madman's work as being extraordinary thus refers not to the content of the text so much as the means by which it was authorized. And the process of making pure the impure, or making true the untrue, I think refers less to editorial technique than to the specific claims that the author, Tommy Garuga, uh, could make about his relationship to the subject of the story. The madman's extraordinary biography of Milarepa thus uh, does not merely uh, consist of some other version or combination of versions pieced together in a more compelling manner, although that description may not be wholly inaccurate. Rather, uh, it refers to the madman's direct knowledge of the life, not as an author working from secondary sources generations after the fact, and not even as a direct witness to events, but as the biographical subject himself. The fame the madman received uh, upon finishing the life of Milarepa had earned him the status as Milarepa's re-embodiment on earth, a status he advocated himself and one promoted by his own followers, and thus, we shall see how Tsongyun's biography of Milarepa 
as a life of Bill Ray, but can be read in part as his own autobiography, an autobiographical biography, or a life within a life. So I want to say uh, just a, a few words about uh, Tibetan theories of reincarnation that will help to sort of contextualize this next bit. So theories of transmigration and re-embodiment, of course, are common across Asia. And Buddhism is famous for its description of the world as an endless round of misery and dissatisfaction. In fact, the Sanskrit name given to the state is samsara, literally wandering or transmigration. And uh, this here refers to the beginningless and endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. The tradition holds that ordinary people are forced into new rebirths in dependence upon their former actions, that is, karma, in present and previous lives. Great beings, called bodhisattvas, however, are free from the laws of karma and are thus able to consciously direct their own next embodiment so as to benefit the greatest number of people. So in Tibet, this notion served to establish one of its central uh, religious and political institutions, that is, the recognized reincarnated master called a tulku, literally an emanated body. And this was a tradition that is uh, perhaps best illustrated by the Dalai Lama. So according to the system, several years after uh, a great teacher dies, his or her young tulku is actively uh, sought out. Several candidates would be submitted to a battery of rigorous test, uh, tests, and uh, one is then recognized as the next in the reincarnation line. So the present Dalai Lama is recognized as the 14th of his lineage, and after his passing, official, uh, officials will no doubt seek out the 15th. And interestingly, we've seen, if you've been following the news, uh, the, atheist, communist people, uh, uh, government of the People's Republic of China has now deemed that they are the ones who will uh, certify, will seek out and certify who the next Dalai Lama will be. So in one sense, each embodiment is understood as a unique individual, but the entire lineage is also understood as sharing the same mind stream, and therefore to some extent the same experiences and memories. So more than 1,000 unique incarnation lines were historically recognized in Tibet, and many continue uh, into the present day. In fact, several European and American uh, individuals have recently been identified as the rebirth of previous Tibetan masters, and uh, perhaps most notably, the Kung Fu action star Steven Seagal, who is occasionally referred to as the action mom. <laughs> so uh, we don't really have time here for a detailed discussion, of the uh, broad political, social, or economic implications of the Tulku system in Tibet. But as one might expect, there were ample opportunities uh, for excess and abuse. Indeed, uh, the overarching grip that the Tulku system held on uh, Tibetan religion uh, and politics both seems to have been one of the madman's principal targets in advocating a return to the, sim to the simpler tradition of the wandering ascetic and body primordial. So at the same time, however, it became quickly clear that the madman and his followers freely adopted the image of the tulku of the emanated or reincarnated teacher as a means for legitimating his own authorial voice. So as recorded within the tradition, Sonia Guruka's religious career was punctuated by visionary encounters with Norepa. So at the age of 26, uh, the madman journeys to one of Norepa's principal retreat sites in southern Tibet. And at that spot, uh, the story uh, tells us, I'm quoting here, while abiding evenly in the state of river flow meditation for one month, Milarepa would appear and sometimes give compassionate advice, sometimes he would teach the Dharma, sometimes he would display miracles, and sometimes he would narrate his own life story. So for Milarepa himself then, the madman is understood as receiving not only religious teachings and advice, but in fact a direct transmission of the Yogin's life story from the biographical so another episode in the madman's career illustrates his self-identification as the yogi's re-embodiment. So just uh, in, in, in this episode, just as the woodblocks for the new biography were being completed, a great teacher associated with the local monastery uh, comes up to the madman and says to him, quote, Venerable precious lord, wherever one looks at your activities, you ought to be the emanation of a Buddha or a Bodhisattva, just whose incarnation are well, to this the madman replies, somewhat enigmatically, by looking at the footprint of the meditation cave of Richard Pook, you'll know whose incarnation I am. 